right, here we go. Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining our monthly Eloqua user group meeting. I'm Karen Pindle, KP, your host for today. We've got a pretty exciting agenda with folks from Litmus here to present to you all, and also our own Brenda. She's going to present to you guys about the contact washing machine app in Eloqua, which has been a request for some time now. So sorry for the delay, but thankfully, I think it'll be worth it. Um, let me share my screen and we'll get right. Oops, that's not what we're supposed to be. Let me fix that really quickly here. Um, if you're new to the Eloqua user group, thank you for coming. Thanks for choosing to spend some time with us. Either way, we appreciate you being here, but um, we do this every month, third Thursday of the month. At the same time, we try to keep it consistent. It's always at 11 a.m. Eastern time for uh, UK time. There's no perfect time to do this. I get complaints from people. It's too early on the West Coast. I'm like, well, it's not that early. It's 8 a.m., but I, early is all, I guess, in perspective. But we do our best to try to accommodate everybody. And every year I re ask people if this is still a good time to meet. So who the heck am I? Why am I hosting this? So I work for Sojourn Solutions, one of Oracle's partners, Adobe's partners, Salesforce, et cetera. Um, I've been in the marketing space for nearly 20 years, almost all of that time. So 17 years has had something to do with Eloqua. I started out as an Eloqua user, worked for two different technology companies and was their Eloqua admin. Um, I did other stuff outside of Eloqua, especially at the first company when I was in my early 20s and literally did whatever they told me to do, <laughs> um, which was mostly marketing, marketing related. But anyways, fast forward, you know, I've been in the consulting side of the house, helping lots of like literally at this point, hundreds of customers with not just Eloqua, but other things. But my deepest expertise of all the tech um, that I try to know and keep up with is Eloqua. So that's what I think kind of helps me to be someone who can get this going for everybody, coordinate it and know hopefully what I'm talking about most of the time. Uh, I'm from upstate New York. That's where these photos are. Well, the photo on the right is from a reservoir and upstate New York, about two hours north of New York City. The water there actually feeds New York City. It's pretty cool. There's a couple of man-made reservoirs that give water to people in New York City, clean water. Um, they do obviously do a little bit of cleaning to it. There's a lot of animals like my dogs in there doing things they shouldn't be doing in it. Um, and then on the left there, I just thought I'd show a recent picture. Our niece is in town and we actually had s'mores um, a couple nights ago, which was we didn't really want to do it because it's so hot here in Tennessee. I live outside of Nashville now and it's um, the heat index this week. It's been feeling like it's above 100 degrees with high humidity. So it's pretty sticky, as is the case with a lot of folks. So I know I'm not alone. Um, so hopefully everybody stays safe. And if you're ever in curious about like you guys, hopefully all here love Eloqua. But if you're ever wondering like, well, is it the right fit for our organization? Um, every quarter, I host a webinar. I realized I spelled marketing automation wrong down there. Automaton. Um, <laughs> automation comparison webinar, specifically comparing Eloqua, Marketo, HubSpot, and Salesforce Marketing Cloud. I will tell you guys, I think Eloqua is uh, the, in the top two for sure. Um, and if you want to know why, you can always join that webinar. It goes into the details. So our agenda to, for today. So I'll give you guys the usual quick Eloqua relevant reminders, trying to help you guys stay in the Eloqua know of what's going on as it relates to Eloqua. Um, and then I'll hand it over to the Litmus team. They're gonna give us an overview and actually an in, uh, in the Eloqua interface, they're gonna show you a demo of their email testing app. They have other solutions outside of that, but that's just for today what they wanna show you guys. Um, and they'll explain why this is a great app. And we have customers using, I, I can attest to it, that it's a great app to have um, in use with your Eloqua. So ultimately you can get improved email deliverability and what follows after that people enjoying your emails and hopefully converting, et cetera, et cetera. Um, good customer experience, all that fun stuff um, that makes a difference. So then we're gonna pass it over to Brenda on our team. She is a senior marketing automation consultant. She knows more than Eloqua, but she sure the heck knows Eloqua really well. Um, and she's going to walk us through some tips for using Eloqua's contact washing machine app. So that'll be our last topic. And of course, we'll have an open forum as time permits for questions. If you have any questions throughout this webinar, please um, just post them in the Q&A. That'd be great. We'll do our best to answer them directly in there or live. Um, if we don't get to your question, like I always share at the beginning of this call, I'll follow up. I'll make sure that we get you the answer. If we don't know the answer, we'll try to find out the answer and chase down who we need to. Sometimes that means um, we chase down somebody at Oracle. 
And I will send this recording, of course, to you all later today. So uh, just really quickly, other stuff in the world's happening. I try to do like, what's the month um, that people are celebrating things, Gay Pride Month, um, or I like the better term, not huge on pride, but more like LGBTQ Awareness Month. Why is June even the month for this? I didn't know until like a week ago when I looked this up. So in 1969, in the month of June, there were riots at a gay bar in New York City. It's, it was called Stonewall Inn. And this is just a picture from it. Um, unfortunately, the police were doing this pretty regularly back in the 60s. Um, obviously, gay people, transgender, et cetera, didn't have many rights then. So the police uh, basically went into, with no good reason, uh, this gay club. And what ended up happening, like it says here, the people there were like, I think 200 or 300 people in the club, they retaliated and it led to six days of riots. Unfortunately, violence included on both sides. It wasn't just the police that were brutal. It was the, the gay people as well, but it ended up, I think the positive side of this was um, New York City has apologized for their police force's behavior. Um, it, I think that happened in the last decade that they did own that their police could have definitely handled the situation better. Probably like not hitting people with their bully sticks would be one thing. That's what ultimately was the start of the, the violence was, um, I think it was a drag queen got hit on the head with a bully stick was what the, the story is. So, and said, help, like you guys don't let the cops do this to us. So anyway, um, that's where it all started. And coincidentally, Obama, when he signed same-sex marriage, to become legal federally in the United States, it was in the month of June. So, um, but mainly the reason why it's June is having to do with when uh, gay people started to stand up for, really stand up for having rights. And it led to that happening across the world, not just in the United States. So um, it means something different to everybody. There's, you know, I, I myself am a lesbian and have been to gay pride events and have had fun, but also have been embarrassed at what has happened at them with other people. Um, but it's more about the rights I think that people are celebrating and not so much the partying, but to each their own, I suppose. Um, and in my opinion, even more importantly is June is known for Juneteenth. So if you didn't know, June 19th is Juneteenth. Um, it is a federal holiday. I believe it was last year or the year before that it became official in the United States um, as a holiday, federally recognized holiday. And so a lot of us think about how um, slaves were emancipated when Abraham Lincoln signed the Emancipation Proclamation um, years before 1865. But in, we all thought, oh, the, the African-Americans are free. There's no longer slavery. Nobody's a slave anymore. Well, that didn't happen in certain parts of the United States, not just Texas, but specifically, um, you know, like this says here, there were almost, about, I think I said like 250,000 Texan slaves um, so there were more than that because there were other states who hadn't freed the slaves as well. But specifically, this talks about how once they found out um, that they actually were supposed to be free, they were actually freed. There was, there's more to the story than that, but you might also hear Juneteenth celebrated as Freedom Day, Jubilee Day, like it says, or uh, Liberation, Emancipation Day. But it's unfortunate. Um, it's, it's super aggravating and sad. But the, again, I guess the silver lining is that thankfully, you know, it, they did eventually get freed. Obviously, we have a lot of issues today um, and things are kind of resurfacing in our country, but that's why I think it's even more important to remember humans in general, whether you're LGBTQ, African-American, you know, whatever, to just be respectful and kind to everybody. We're all humans. All right, so relevant reminder specific to Eloqua. Um, First, I want to just let you guys know the Oracle Markey Awards, they had these submissions for uh, the award categories or nomination to submit. The deadline was going to be tomorrow, but they've extended it to July 1st. This happens like every year, just about. They always extend it, um, I think almost every single year. So now you have until July 1st at 5 U.S. Pacific time to submit. There's, um, I think, 11 categories for customers, and there's a couple categories for partners of Oracle's to submit. And then just yesterday, Oracle opened up registration for the Marketing Summit Global Conference. It's going to be in Las Vegas, Nevada, um, October 17th through the 20th. So the I just want to show you guys quickly. Um, 
the registration, it depends on when you register, how you register. Um, cheapest is for the public sector. And then for most of us, it would be $17.99 up until July 24th, called like the early bird pricing or early rate, they're calling it. And then it starts to get more expensive naturally the closer you get to the event. So around $2,000 on the high end if you wait. If you do a pass of, I think, yeah, 10 or more, you can get it cheaper. Um, so They've got the website. I've linked to it in here for you guys. Um, so just take a look if you're interested in going. And of course, you can talk to your Oracle account manager if you have questions. I will say they have a pretty good site there. They put FAQs together. I don't, I do not believe they're going to have a virtual option to attend. I was really wishing that they would for whoever physically can't get there um, or cost-wise can't get there. There's a little thing called a recession happening basically globally. So it'll be interesting to see if they actually make that happen, if they um, do allow virtual, but I, my guess is they're not going to. It's probably going to just be in-person. I believe that's the only option as of now. So I have asked a few people at Oracle and I'm waiting for confirmation. If anybody from Oracle is here and wants to put into the chat, if you know if people can attend a marketing summit virtually or if it must be in-person, that'd be great. Feel free. Um, and then the third bullet here, just want to let you guys know. So the product management team came out with what they're calling Eloquist Tip Tuesday. So they're every Tuesday, the plan here is to have a tip for you guys. The first one is about um, having notifications. So when Eloqua users first log into Eloqua, you can have a little notification for them. Like we all see when there's um, an Eloqua release or a, a product management team webinar they're putting on, maybe about an Eloqua new release. You can see those notifications and click on them and register like for the webinars. Um, so you can do this yourself in your own Eloqua. I didn't even know that. So I read the tip and then jumped around in our Eloqua and I was like, oh, this is cool. I could mess with my <laughs> coworkers who use Eloqua if I wanted to, but I'm not going to. I'm not encouraging that. Um, I would use it for real business reasons, ideally, maybe a little bit of humor in there too. Um, but that's a, a good thing to follow now. It's in the Eloqua Insiders group, but there's the direct link to it. So you can take a look. Jody Mooney, thank you for doing that. I, I think all of us could benefit from Eloqua tips. They won't all apply every time, but every little nook and cranny that you can take is helpful. Um, and then just in the top liners group, guys, that's just want to reiterate a great place to follow and get emailed. I'm set up there in top liners. So I'll get an email whenever there's an update to a post I'm following or have liked. Um, and like the tip Tuesday, get notified when there's another tip. So I would definitely join that if you have not already. It's publicly available. You don't have to pay for any of this stuff. So um, it's just, I think, smart to help you to adopt Eloqua, learn it as best as you can, you know, learn new things you wouldn't have even thought of from other Eloqua users and, you know, Oracle folks, consultants like myself and Brenda from Sojourn, et cetera. And then free training. So there, the Eloqua Help Center is full of, in essence, training documentation, how-to steps, with screenshots and videos and everything to follow to learn Eloqua. If you want to take courses, you've got Oracle University where there are online pre-recorded courses. There are some you can join live with an instructor online. Those are paid for though. So you have to have an Oracle University pass. You pay Oracle for annually typically is how it works. So, but this is just linking to the Eloqua Explorer free course, which is very one-on-one -on -one level Eloqua stuff, but it's still good. Like you got to start somewhere. Or if you have a boss starting, that's like, what's this Eloqua thing? And they want to wrap their heads around it more. That's a good thing to recommend to them. And then if you just want to keep up with whatever videos come out about Eloqua, they have a YouTube channel. It's the Oracle Marketing YouTube channel, but you can specifically follow the Eloqua uh, videos there. And then if you ever missed this Eloqua user group, we put the recordings on our website in our webinars area. We actually have a user group section of our resource center and Eloqua is the only platform that we do user group meetings for. So it's really easy to find. Um, so feel free to take a look or go back there. Or if you're ever wondering like, did you ever cover X topic KP in the last couple of years of doing these Eloqua user group meetings? Just feel free to reach out to me and I'll uh, let you know. And if we haven't and we can do it, we'll definitely get it on our, our schedule we're not months out, like we're actually usually the next month we might have an agenda for, but um, I share that to say, if there's something you want to hear us talk about on an Eloqua user group meeting, please let me know. I, I really encourage you to, to reach out almost every month after this, I'm not every month, um, usually the day of these Eloqua user group meetings, somebody reaches out with a question about 
a topic presented or something not related to anything we're going to discuss today, but related to Eloquest. So feel free. I'm happy to be a resource. And if, again, I don't know something, I'll either find it out for you or point you to where you can get the answer. Uh, or that sometimes is to somebody like at Oracle. Um, and then last but not least, trying to keep up with marketing strategies, marketing ops strategies, um, what technologies are latest, greatest. I recommend ClickZ. They're a good company that does a nice newsletter daily to help you stay in the know there. So with that, uh, I'm going to look at the chat to see if somebody maybe answered the question about, nope. We didn't have an answer about the marketing summit. I was hoping for somebody to say, yes, there's going to be a virtual option, but a girl can dream. All right. I'm trying to get my screen to fly away there. All right. At this point, I want to welcome back Sam, Jess, and Justin from Litmus. So if you've been coming to the Celica User Group for a while, last July they were here and did a similar presentation, but of course, there's always something that changes a little bit. So we want to make sure you guys hear from Litmus at least once a year through this venue, Eloqua, because again, like I said, I'm a big fan of their email testing app. A lot of us, probably almost every single one of us, use Eloqua to send emails. And if your emails aren't tested, if they aren't rendering well, if you're not testing, you don't know if they're rendering well. Um, but regardless, it's good to know there are solutions out there that you can use right inside of Eloqua to make sure you're really testing your emails thoroughly and that they are rendering well, et cetera. So without further ado, I'm gonna hand it over to the Litmus team to walk us through their app for Eloqua. All right, there we go. And thank you guys for joining today, much appreciated. Awesome, thanks for having us. Can everyone see my screen? Looks good, Thumbs Sam. up. Awesome. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> no worries. No worries. Well, hi, everyone. I'm super happy to be here. I know we already got a little bit of an intro from Karen, so thank you. But um, I am Jess Materna. I'm the Director of Product Marketing here at Litmus. Um, I've been at Litmus for just about three and a half years or so, and I'm based out of the lovely Burlington, Vermont area. Um, Sam, do you want to give a quick intro and then Justin? Yeah, uh, morning all, Sam Nichols here, Partnership Director at Litmus. I've been here about six years, the first four of those on the enterprise sales team, and then the last two on the partnership and integration team. And hello, everyone. My name is Justin. I'm a solutions engineer here at Litmus. I just passed my six-year mark two days ago. Um, and yeah, happy to be here, and we'll be showing you some cool stuff today. So I'm the newbie here at Litmus. They've both been here for six years. <laughs> but um, yeah, so today we're going to go over a little bit about, um, you know, the power of email marketing and how Litmus can help really you get the best ROI out of your email marketing and cover the importance of email testing, why that's necessary. Um, we'll share a couple quick Litmus success stories with Eloqua users, and then we'll go over a demo of our integrations. And if we have time, a little bit about our other functionality within our platform. So just gonna jump right in. Um, let's talk about a little bit about the challenge that Litmus solves. Um, we know that the average consumer sees a ton of ads and emails and digital engagements in a single day. Um, one study estimated that to be about 5,000. And because they have so many <clears throat> stimuluses or um, you know, communications that are trying to reach them, they often just tune out. So as marketers, I mean, I'm a marketer too, as marketers, we know that the goal is to get our message heard. Um, <clears throat> and email's often a great way to do that. Um, more than 50% of people say, you know what, that's how I want to be contacted by brands. I want them to email me. Um, but there's a lot of noise in the inbox and a lot of competition. So brands often need to compete with one another to cut through that clutter and get their message heard above their competition. On top of competing with your competition, there's a lot of different technologies that often go into creating an effective email campaign. Um, HubSpot estimated that the average marketer uses 12 or more tools, and that can be a lot higher sometimes, um, but 12 or more tools to manage their campaigns and data. Um, and manually copying and pasting code and email assets between tools can be really risky. Um, there's a lot of room for error. Um, you might not have the right version in the right place at the right time. So integrations are usually key to working efficiently and effectively. And the last challenge, the really big challenge here, um, but creating 
great emails, just not easy to start with. And then on layered on top of that, there's so many variations as to how an email can result in terms of the customer experience. So there's over 300,000 different ways an email can render depending on the email client, the device, the phone, um, the, the mode like dark mode or light mode. Um, so tons of variation to start with in terms of how emails can render. Um, on top of that, email clients change all the time. I think we did a study <clears throat> last year where the top six email clients made um, an update and on average, or the equivalent of one change every 1.2 days. And they don't necessarily notify everybody, hey, we made a change, your email might render differently the next time you send it. So there's a lot of ambiguity in terms of how emails could render any given day that you choose to send them. And emails that don't look good in terms of the customer experience and how they react, um, many users will quickly delete them. And if they do that, or even if they don't do that, um, after enough email errors, you know, users will, will likely unsubscribe to communications altogether. So Litmus, we kind of think of it as insurance for your investment in Eloqua. Um, it helps you create these exceptional email experiences faster um, and make sure they're just on brand error free for your customers every time you send. Um, and while doing that, we help save time. So now I'm gonna hand it over to Sam to go over <clears throat> some of our, um, our other, you know, why test with Litmus um, and those customer success stories. Sorry, was muted there. Thanks, Jess. Um, just sort of where we sit in the sort of email testing ecosystem, I'll just highlight a few areas where uh, we succeed relative to competition. Uh, really, the breadth and depth of the clients and devices that you can test across in Litmus, I think we're actually up to around 120 clients uh, and devices. So you can ensure that your emails are pixel perfect on the clients and devices where your um, users are gonna be opening them. Um, we're super fast to get new clients and devices to market, often right when they are released, you can test them on Litmus. Um, that lower left-hand corner is probably the most powerful one, which is the speed with which our previews run. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about this in the case studies in a few minutes. Um, we've invested a lot in our platform. Um, you know, Justin's going to have a little bit of time to show you, obviously, the integration inside of uh, the Eloqua platform, but also the Litmus proper platform itself. Um, obviously, we take privacy and security very, very seriously. Um, and then Litmus is known as a leader in email marketing from best practices, industry tens. Some of you on this call are probably um, get our weekly and monthly newsletter. So that's something um, you know, we, we want to be out in front of the market. We want to be uh, helping all of you solve email marketing and testing challenges. Um, just in terms of on the next slide, Jess, um, sort of our, our end to end platform. As I mentioned, Justin's going to show you what our system looks like inside of Eloqua, but there's a lot more to Litmus. So if we talk about our enterprise platform and the value that that brings to marketers, in this case, specifically Oracle marketers, um, you know, we have an end to end platform to build and QA an email all the way through uh, litmus check checklists, spam filter testing, litmus proof, so collaborative ways for large teams to um, make live edits on an email, make sure everybody's staying on the same page in terms of what email they're working off of. So all these historical log jams in the email creation process, we're trying to free up and create some efficiencies across. We're obviously not an ESP. We don't send your emails out externally, but as we have time today, we'll also show you some of the email analytics insights that we offer. At, at a high level, I'll just touch on those. Um, obviously, we can serve as opens, but we don't think uh, opens by themselves tell much of a story. We want to get into a, a bit deeper analytics and insights around read time engagement. So just because somebody opened your email doesn't mean they're engaged with it. Uh, we want to build a story around those opens and enable your team to figure out what's working and what's not working. Um, just in terms of our, you know, a bit, bit of a logo slide here, the only thing that I'll highlight here is where we are really across all sizes of clients in all sectors and industries. Um, we have a self-service business on our website that serves um, smaller teams with lower testing volume all the way up through, again, obviously large um, Oracle, um, enterprise size organizations. And again, we probably have a bit of focus, um, you know, financial services, we have a lot of clients is 
um, healthcare, uh, but as you'll see with some of the customer success stories, we're across the map in terms of types of clients that we work with. Um, and I'll just wrap up with two very brief customer success stories. Um, one is with Zendesk, many of you are probably familiar with them, support and sales platform. Um, they were struggling with basically the time it was taking them for to create, review, and approve emails and obviously get those out the door. Um, with the embedded litmus integration inside of Eloqua, we enabled the Zendesk email marketing team to save on average about three hours per email. That number by itself might not seem a lot until you sort of pull the string on that and start multiplying that across obviously the volume of campaigns on a monthly or quarterly or annual basis. And with that time savings, obviously the team has the ability to, well, either build more emails or focus on other, other marketing priorities. So that's been a, that's been a nice, par nice partnership. And VSP, the last one, some of you might be familiar with them, uh, the eye care and vision service platform. Again, really struggling with their QA process. They were using multiple platforms. Um, you'll see down at the bottom, if we skip down to the results there, over 100 hours per month and cutting their review time in half. So they're, they're again, slightly different industries, but the use cases were, they were using multiple platforms. They weren't testing where they were building. Uh, lots of people involved with the appro approval process. And with some of the tools that Justin's about to show you, uh, we'll be able to sort of prove out how we've uh, shrunk in that, that time. Last thing that I'll highlight here is uh, we're here to help. Um, so there's my contact information. We'll obviously share this deck in the recording after the call. But if anybody has questions directly, if anybody wants to dive into something deeper that Justin shows, uh, whether that's proof or the integration or email analytics, or wants to talk about, again, how they access the integration inside of Eloqua, please just reach out to me directly. I'm happy to um, speak with you or in conjunction with Sojourn, that's fine as well. So I'll pause there, uh, see if there's any questions at a high level. And again, if there's not, in the interest of time, we'll jump over to Justin showing you a few of the bells and whistles. No questions yet in the Q&A or chat, but we'll keep an eye out for you guys. Awesome. So the first thing that we have for you today is the app directly inside and integrated into Eloqua. Um, pretty simple. As you're building an email in Eloqua, or as anyone's building an email in Eloqua, we have a cloud app. Uh, if you open the cloud app drawer, inside of that, you'll see um, we have a few instances, uh, but you'll be able to essentially add litmus to your instance of Eloqua, where you can run email previews directly on top of the email that you're building. Now, as Sam mentioned before, there's a lot of email previews that you can choose from. There's over 120 currently. That's always fluctuating depending on what's available, what's new, what gets deprecated. Um, but the selection that you'll have with Litmus is always going to be um, current, uh, especially with Apple Mail and iOS. I bring that up specifically because Apple is a little bit more aggressive about rolling out their updates more so than other providers. So you can be sure that when you have a subscriber base that's using any Apple Mail or iOS devices, that they're going to be using the latest version, uh, or at least anyone is going that has those devices is going to get upgraded within a week or so, most likely. So you want to be testing on the latest versions of that, and we're always first to market with all of those. So you'll have whatever you need to choose from, whatever you choose in your account using that uh, Choose Clients button. Um, we'll bring you to your Litmus settings, which we can look at a little bit more later when we get into the Litmus platform, but you can very easily configure it from there. Um, you can also click into these previews just to open them up and um, look at them in a little bit more detail. Um, you can scroll through them. So that is, you know, something that we see, as Sam was mentioning, just, just save a lot of time. If, if you don't have a, a solution for something like this, you're probably finding your colleague or a stakeholder that's using an iPhone, the other one's using an Android, and someone's using Outlook, and someone's using Gmail or whatnot. Um, when we get into analytics later, I'll talk about how you might discern what actually matters to your organization, but um, that's, that's the, uh, the, the kind of rounded out uh, view of the, the Eloqua integration and kind of how it's used. Happy to take any questions there before we jump into the Litmus platform. Uh, Justin, did we want to quickly show <clears throat> the extension as well? Oh, we can do that. Um, okay. So, cool. great. Thank you, Jess. So additionally, um, we do have a Chrome extension that sits on top of it. It's built into Chrome. It's not integrated into Eloqua like the Cloud App Drawer, but this also comes with enterprise accounts. So this is 
also going to show your email previews, but additionally, we're going to surface a few other things that are really nice to check um, ahead of time. So we're going to check your what we call first impressions, subject line, preview text. Um, we will validate links for you to make sure that you know we can see if the link is pointing to a valid destination. Um, and then we'll also check your UTM based tracking parameters. So if you have tracking code, if you have links that have tracking codes appended to them, we will let you know what tracking code is appended to what link. And then we have the image blocking check as well, which shows you what your email looks like without images enabled. As we can see here, you're going to want to make sure you know what your alt text is for those images. If you know it's there to begin with and that it's appropriately descriptive of the image it's replacing. This has uh, several, you know, things relevant here. Accessibility is one thing that comes to mind. Additionally, if someone, especially Outlook users, uh, many people may initially at least ex experience an email without images loaded. And it's your first opportunity as a marketer um, to get their attention and to entice them to read more into an email. And if they're going through a preview pane in an email in Outlook or Gmail or wherever, where the images don't come up immediately, your alt text is the your best bet of getting someone to engage with this is this is more important i think than people give it credit for um yeah I, I totally agree and you can all see how in my example email here i have a lot of work to do if i was actually going to send this email i have a ton of work to do but at least with extension i can catch the things i need to actually work on so right. um yeah and then we also do the loading speed so we will download your images and just make sure that there's no issues with them that they're loading in an appropriate amount of time um and that nothing is not loading. Um, so you're able to check all these things before moving on into later stages of the workflow, which bubbles up into greater efficiencies because the, the less you have to come back later and change things, you know, uh, the better it's going to be, the smoother your entire process is going to be just by design. So this is tends to be really helpful uh, in the building phase. Um, and then from there, we can once again jump into the litmus platform. Um, but I am happy to once again stop for any thoughts, questions anything sounds like we're good um if anything does come up please feel free, you know feel free to interrupt or just or say if anything comes into the chat we can okay, stop and take stock i'm going to go through this pretty high level and pretty quickly just in the interest of time and being conscious of other uh, presenter um so we've just jumped over into the litmus platform Form. Now, for those of you that are unfamiliar, just very quickly, this is a, a the home screen. It's basically a summary of any projects you have going on in Litmus at any given time. And when I talk about projects, usually always just talking about emails. You can see I have a bunch of emails that I've brought in here. Um, when I mouse over the emails, the various features will become uh, available for me to click on. So we're going to be going through most of these today. But how does this actually connect to Eloqua? Um, well, we have this button here that says send in your email. So one of the primary ways that, that someone working in Eloqua would bring their email into Litmus to leverage the rest of our features is by using a test email address. And now importantly for Eloqua use cases, this does not change, it's static. So you can set this up as a user profile in Eloqua. You do that the first time and then you're good to go from that point on. You can keep sending test emails to that. It'll land in your inbox. Um, you can also create folders. The folders also have their own um, addresses that you can send to. So if you wanna set those up as well, that's fine. It just might make it easier to um, auto sort projects and when you send them in or keep things you know in a folder if it's a, a campaign that is you know a multi multi part campaign that needs to be kept together um, there's a few other advantages there but the, the main concept here being in most cases you're going to want to just send a test email into litmus the same way that you're sending a test email to yourself or to colleagues or stakeholders um, you send it into us and we are able to do several things for you so we'll go through those now um, i'm gonna i just sent this in earlier i'm gonna skip over our builder tool um, this is, you know, for the most case, we assume that most people are going to be working in Eloqua and building Eloqua, but just for what it's work, we do have a full-fledged building tool. I'm not going to go through this now, but um, just very briefly, I do want to note that we do have a sync feature that connects to Eloqua. So if someone did want to build in Litmus, who's using Eloqua as their email service provider, um, you're still able to leverage those tools together pretty seamlessly. Um, but I'll move on from there to get into, I think, the main feature that we want to start with, which is our previews and QA tool. Uh, previews and QA is a more robust view of what we just saw in the Chrome extension inside Eloqua. When you send your email into Litmus, we are now running this audit on your email automatically based on the, the deployed processed email um, that is going out the door. So any dynamic content that comes into play, anything that is being generated 
processed or changed upon deployment, we are capturing all of that, which could be nothing or it could be a lot of things. Um, and there's, you know, there's a lot that can happen when you actually deploy an email. So the email previews here, take any of that dynamic content or anything that's generated by processing into account and you can check those. Once again, we have the ability to choose our email clients and with our analytics that we'll see later, we can help you figure out which of these you want to select, uh, but there are a lot to choose from between mobile, desktop, and webmail um, clients. So whatever I've chosen, show up here, and this is also what's gonna show up in the Eloqua app when you're using the integration. Um, but beyond the previews, again, we're checking several other things. So we already went through some of these, so I'm not gonna spend too much time, but keep in mind that this is checking it from a test email, meaning anything that needs to be in place has been put in place. And we are now giving you a snapshot of what your subscribers are, are, are going to see. Um, and it's you know just toward that kind of absolute peace of mind and then and maximizing your investment in the, your email program and your insurance policy in the email altogether. Um, we do an accessibility audit, which is not something that you would get in the Chrome extension that we saw earlier or the Eloqua app. This is really nice. It just helps point out any areas of your code that you might be able to improve through the lens of accessibility, ADA standards, WCAG standards. There's no governing um, accessibility compliance for email specifically today. Although accessibility as a trend is growing, it aligns with best practices for email anyway. It's good to make sure your emails are as accessible as possible. It's, it can only be positive and improve your engagement across the board. Um, we do a screen reader preview as well. You can listen to it read back to you via that screen reader, which uh, can be pretty enlightening. Um, once again, we'll validate links for you. We'll validate tracking links for you. We'll show you without the images enabled, we'll do the load speed check. Uh, but another thing that you get by sending it into Litmus is the spam test. So unless you send it to us, we're not gonna be able to check uh, against you know your domain and the sending IP address. So this is another benefit to also sending it into Litmus and grabbing this is that we'll be able to run your domain and, and, and IP through authentication, DKIM, DMARC, SPF. Um, we'll let you know if your IP or your domain are appearing on any block list. We partner with a tool on the back end that checks uh, against over a hundred active different block listing organizations. Um, so all in all, as you're sending out campaigns um, consistently, it's a good thing to keep uh, your keep your eye on, especially as with deliverability, which is a fuzzy science to begin with, uh, you wanna make sure you're catching anything that might change um, due to the fluid nature of just how spam algorithms work and how deliverability works as, a, as an environment. Um, so all in all, the high level tasting note here, it, it's an automated QA, QC for your email um, that is here waiting for you just by sending a test email. So there's a lot of value here. It saves a lot of time. Also standardizes your email QA process. If you have not done that, if things are happening haphazardly, it's a really nice way to just have a nice checklist of things to go through to, to take uh, kind of all the, the thought and doubt out of what that process should be. Uh, and it standardizes it against best practices for you. Uh, we can move on unless, yeah. yeah. Just a heads up, probably five more minutes or so. I just okay. Brenda has time, so yeah, yeah. I'm showing proof, that'd be great. Sure, we'll speed through the next two things. Proof is a tool to facilitate and consolidate any of the feedback and approvals that are going in on in your email program. Um, oftentimes we see this as the biggest bottleneck in email workflows to begin with um, for uh, many reasons, but um, generally it's due to the fact that you're getting feedback through multiple channels from multiple stakeholders and it's on one or two people to manage that. And it's uh, even more so than building in QA, this, this is what, stops emails from getting out the door. So we created a nice interface to be able to click, comment on whatever you want to comment on. You can highlight copy as well and quote that. So you're not guessing what someone might be referring to. Um, and this can all be commented on and uh, um, you, know, you can have a dialogue right here next to the version of your email, but you can also share this out via a link and anyone can access this. So external stakeholders, other departments, people that don't have access to Litmus and that helps consolidate the whole process Anyone that accesses your account via that link is added as a free and unlimited user called a proof reviewer, where they only get access to the proof, but you're able to in include them in that feedback process um, without having to fragment any of those streams of feedback, creating that bottleneck. Uh, a good example I like to use is like a legal team. You're not going to want to invite a legal team to have a, a paid license on your litmus account but they might need to approve a footer of an email well instead of sending them a separate email and having them approve it through there and putting the approval somewhere else or in a project management tool it can all happen in the same place um, so that tends to be a, a huge time saver and it's one of the one of our customers favorite parts of the platform um, and then i 
we'll move on to analytics very quickly, just to show you the, the high level things that we, um, we are looking at here. I'm gonna jump into an analytics report very quickly, but we're looking at generally two things um, and we generally do not overlap with what you'd, get, you'd be getting from something like Eloqua or any other ESP analytics. We're meant to be used alongside the ESP, not as a replacement. Um, we're gonna generally augment what you're already getting. Um, from a high level, we do this by looking at the engagement and read time. So we qualify opens for you. Not only is an email being opened, but is that open contributing to the success of your email program? If someone's just scrolling through their preview pane, they're gonna going to trigger an open because um, it's based on pixel tracking, just like most ESPs are as well. But that open is not, again, contributing. It's contributing to a higher open rate, but a lower ROI per campaign per subscriber. So you want to understand when someone opens the email, are they actually engaged? And can I start to build segments out based on that engagement, which we help you do? Um, the other piece of this is your email client breakdown. Where is your audience opening emails? What do you need to think about when you're coding your emails? What do you need to think about when you're testing? and uh, checking for compliance across your emails. If no one's using Outlook 2013, your email doesn't need to look nice there. It's, it's not effort you should be putting in um, to your email program to make emails perform perfectly in devices that are not being used um, by your audience. It's, it's You want to course correct over time with your audience so you're leveraging your time most effectively. Uh, we do that at the high level, and then we also do that at the individual level. So we can tell you person A, open the email on their iPhone for four seconds, at nine in the morning. And later that day, they open it again on Outlook on their desktop for 10 seconds. Um, and I'll stop there, but there's a lot of opportunity for building out more uh, specific and personalized segmentation when it comes to getting that individual data. So I know that was a lot to take in, but I'm happy to answer any questions. We're gonna to jump to the uh, next topic because of time, but this has been a really good demonstration and just information for everybody. Um, if you guys have any questions for the litmus team, please pop them in the Q&A, email me later, whatever you wanna do, and I'll connect you with these guys. Thank you, Justin, Jess, Sam, really appreciate you guys walking us through a couple of different things there. Um, so you guys can see there's a couple of different ways you can use their app right inside of Eloqua as an extension on Chrome, the litmus app itself, there's benefits to each one of them. Um, my opinion is if you're going to do something, do it right, do it well, you know, we all pretty much here do email marketing and their app to me is a no brainer. If you're, again, it's going to help you to do it really well. Can you do it without their app? Technically? Yes. Are you going to have as effective, uh, email performance? I can probably bet all the money in my bank accounts that you won't. Um, so I would encourage you to look at their app. One of the options here. We have a lot of customers that prefer to use it right there inside of Eloqua, get a good feel for it, get some value, and then get the, I guess, you know, the justification to get the actual litmus standalone app. Well, they'll still use the app inside Eloqua. So anyways, I'm going to stop talking and pass it over to Brenda so she can walk us through the contact washing machine app tips that she has for you guys today. So Brenda, the floor is yours. Great. Thank you. Uh, so for those of you who do not know me, my name is Brenda Burrell. Um, I am a senior consultant with Sojourn. And today I would like to walk everyone through the Oracle contact washing machine app and give a quick demo of some simple use cases. So what the app actually does uh, is it enables cleansing of contact fields. You're able to define one or more of these fields as inputs, and then you can run what's called actions on them, which I'll talk about in a minute. Uh, such as trim, concatenate, adjust the case to proper or lower case. You can even perform lookups to populate fields. And then the data can be mapped back to the same field or you can actually map it back to a different field. So the benefits here are, is obviously keeping your data clean. You can have this, and I'm gonna show you this in the demo. Um, it works on both campaign canvas and program canvas. So you can put it in line um, to help the effectiveness of lead creation, lead scoring, uh, certainly will help with segmentation and keeping data fields clean, as well as great, I'll show you some tips that um, are great use for personalization if you do a lot of field merging in your emails as well. 
Um, the fact that this can be used on program canvas is exceptionally nifty because that means you can use this on contacts and CDO fields. So you have the ability to actually go in and, and cleanse existing CDO data as well. And you'll see uh, when I jump into the demo that this is pretty handy for things like cleaning pick list values. So one of the key things I see this used again and again for is uh, if you've got like a country or a state pick list and you're really trying to keep it clean, especially when passing leads to sales, and you want to blank out, for example, things that are not within a pick list value, you can use the contact washing machine uh, to do things like that. So I'm going to show you that um, in a second. Uh, for those of you that are not familiar with the app itself and where to get it, you can just download it from the Oracle Cloud Marketplace. It's a standard prepackaged app from Oracle. Um, they own it and configured it. There's not really any configuration here. So when you go into um, your settings area and then apps, you can go to the marketplace, search for it, download it. There's nothing to do here. Um, once it's installed, you're good. And then um, you can pop it into program or campaign canvas and that's where the configuration and all the magic happens. So these actions uh, that I talked about are basically commands that are gonna transpose data. So you're gonna set up and run these actions on one field at a time, and you're gonna guide records through the app based on either filters or decision rules in your canvas, or you can use something called conditions, which I'll, I'll talk about in a minute when I get into the demo. There are, uh, I think, 13 actions available. They are listed here. And I, to be honest, I don't use all of these. There's like four or five that are really, really uh, super nifty and popular that I use again and again and again. Um, and some of those are the ones I'm gonna demo for you today. But just know that they range from pretty simple, whereas you can upper or lowercase fields um, to fairly complex. So you can do math actions, calculations, if you wanna get really technical, you can get into regular expressions to do computations inside fields. You cannot add actions to the list. So again, this is a pre-packaged app from Oracle. Um, so this is a defined set of actions that are available that are um, for use. And you can customize within the action, you can customize what it's doing, obviously. I'm gonna show you that, but just know that you can't say, oh, I, I decided I wanna do a different action. You, you only have access to the 13 that are here. Um, okay, so let me actually jump into the demo here. Uh, so this is just a really, really simple flow that I set up and I have never pretty much never had a client that I have had that has not used this um, for one, you know, reason or another. Like I said, it's available on program and campaign canvas and typically the way I use it is I will put it in line with uh, a flow and control the segment that's coming in. So once you download it, you'll see it's available under the action. So you can just uh, here, contact washing machine, you would drag it in like any other step into your flow. This can go inside an integration, lead management flow. Um, a lot of times we see these as standalone programs that are sort of evergreen or always running in the background. So every day it might be looking for a segment of um, dirty records according to your filter, drawing them in and sending them through the steps. And in this particular case, I just have a wait step at the month, uh, at the end of the year, uh, for a month at the end, so that I can QC the records that are going through. Um, that's not necessarily obviously needed when you have this in line live, but for the purposes of the demo, that's why that step is there. Another thing to note is that you can have uh, multiple nodules or you can do uh, multiple steps within one nodule. So I figured I would show you both ways. That's why I have two steps here. A lot of clients find it easier to just do one action per step. So you could have a step here that's gonna set fields to blank, another step here you know, that might do proper case or a math function, or you can do everything inside one step. And I'm, I'm gonna show you both ways. It's just really ease of use and your preference. So we're gonna pop this open. It has the normal scheduling and routing. So if you, if you get an error and you wanna route this to an error step, that's all possible. You can also schedule it to run. Um, if we click on the configuration, this is really where the real magic happens. So you'll be able to give the step a name. Uh, in this particular one, I am showing you the set to blank action. So out of that 13 set of actions we referred to earlier on the slide, 
I selected set to blank. It's going to ask you to pick a source field. So this is just um, one of the available fields in your contact list. I happen to be using um, the contact washing machine here. You can also do it on CDOs, in which case you would you know, see your CDO list of fields here. So I would like to cleanse uh, or use for cleansing the lead source detail field. And what I'm going to do is just simply set it to a blank. So like I said, this is really handy if you've got pick lists with erroneous values that are outside the pick list you want to uh, clear out. Uh, this conditions that I referenced earlier is a filtering mechanism. I typically don't use this, but many people do. If you um, are not using decision rules or filters or specific segments to bring records um, into your flow, you can add this condition, which basically allows you to tell it which records to take the action on. So I can further, um, if, as all my records are dropping into the step, I can further condition it to say, hey, based on you know a specific field, I only want to cleanse it if this field you know equals or starts with or something. So it's just another data point. Um, if it doesn't meet the condition, even though it goes through the step, it'll skip cleansing that field. Like I said, I typically don't um, use this. It's just simpler for me in the flow to filter records in. I know I want to cleanse. Um, so that's available if you need it. Uh, so again, we're setting the field lead source detail to blank. Here's where I'm picking the action. Um, there is a list here that you can choose from. This is the one I picked. And then there's a destination field. Um, so for every step, you have to obviously check a source field and an action and a destination field. The destination is where you want the cleanse data to go. So as I mentioned earlier, there are or could be cases where uh, you'd prefer to use a particular field to look at for cleansing purposes, but then you want to push the cleanse data into the, a different cleansed field. In this case, I'm actually popping it back into the same field I started with because I want to overwrite what's there. So I'm looking at lead source detail as my source. I'm setting it to blank. When I run this through the step, what we want to see is that lead source detail has nothing in it because I've blanked it out. Um, so that's that particular step. I want to show you one other way to do it. I have a couple other examples here. Um, this one is actually doing two actions in one step. So as I said, um, you can do multiple actions in one step if that's your preference. So you'll see in step one here, I'm doing proper case. Here's, um, I'll go through this in a minute, but if I scroll down, I've added a second step that's going to actually do something completely different. It's gonna do um, what's called compose or concatenate data. So here in proper case, um, again, give your step a title, select the source field that you wanna use. In this case, it's first name. And again, this is really, really great if you're doing any kind of personalization, mail merging, field merging. Um, you wanna just cleanse leads before they go to sales. This is basically making sure uh, the first name in this particular case, you can do it on last name, you can do it on country, company, anything, um, has a uppercase for the first case, um, for the first letter. So I'm cleansing first name. I've selected as my action from the list proper case. There's no you know, configuration. It knows how to do that. And I'm going to put the cleanse data right back into the same field first name because I'm saying, you know, for example, if I want to use that in an email field merge. The next thing I'm doing, so it's going to move through the record through that step. There's no conditions here on the same record. It's then going to go into a completely separate action. This one is called compose. Super, super handy. My favorite um, action of all of them. It allows you to select your source field again. So I'm starting with um, like the standard description field, which a lot of people just, it's your large text comments field that you, you know, collect on a form. And a lot of people pass this on the lead to sales. So it allows you to concatenate data into the field. And a lot of times clients will say to me, well, I want to add like a hard coded description um, and then a couple of additional fields in that comments field. So this is how you do it. You can select the compose action. You can type in text. So where it says, this is my description, this is just text I typed in. Um, and then it will allow me to, there's this IntelliSense um, feature where it allows you to actually, if I hit uh, control and space, it allows you to scroll through all of your fields and select the one that you um, wanna pop in here. So you don't have to like memorize any HTML names or things like that. So you can basically, you know, cut and paste multiple different fields in here and concatenate them all. So 
what this one is going to actually do is concatenate the, the frontline text that I put in. This is my description with the full name with this source field name. One other, um, I'll try to be quick here because I want to show you the result. One other cool feature is you can test. So there's a testing function um, here. Let me jump back into this one. And this function allows you to, without touching data in the database, you can actually select any record by hitting this plus button. You can look up any email address or first name or last name in the database, select that record and say run test. And it actually says, it'll tell you if your conditions met, runs the action, shows you the input and the output value here without actually touching the data. So this is sort of a really great way of um, testing to make sure everything works. And then quickly, I just want to show you um, what's going on here with the cleanse data. So I created a little view. Um, here's my first name. Remember, we did proper case. So we capitalized my first name. We blanked out the lead source detail field. And then I did a concatenation in my description of this is my description with my name, with my form uh, source, which is leads to go. So that all looks great. Um, worked wonderfully. Like I said, um, this is a really great um, tool for your toolkit. And I, I will also tell you that the help in the help center, if you go to the class, just search on contact washing machine, it has fabulous um, code samples and information on what each and every of the actions do. So if you ever are wondering, hey, can I do this with the contact washing machine, hit the help center because it is a bevy of knowledge on how this works and it'll actually give you different examples. Um, so we're about out of time, but that's really all I had to share with you. Like I said, very handy app um, and, and thank you. Awesome, Brenda, thank you. And somebody did ask, there are there's correlation here with Eloqua's data tools, one being update rules, which you can also trigger from the program canvas. However, you have to go to the data tools section of Eloqua, set up the update rule, go back to program canvas, like you have to bounce around more. They basically consolidated a couple of data standardization cleansing tools in the contact washing machine app. So you can do it like Brenda showed a lot of different things in the app. You also get more options than the update rules um, are meant to allow for with the contact washing machine app, like she showed with all those actions versus update rules are much more limited. So we're seeing people shift more towards using the contact washing machine app. And like Brenda indicated, pretty much every customer she's worked with who has Eloqua has one of these running. We have a really simple one in our Eloqua instance. We actually have two of them. Um, and I'll just show you guys quickly, but one of them is for country and proper casing uh, let me pull it up. So you don't, I, my point in showing you this is you can start simple, just, you know, the key, one of the best practices is identify, say, two to five fields. If you wanted to start simple, start with two fields that you use a lot in your segmentation. It's helpful if they're pick list fields that you know you get dirty data in, whether it's like geo data, like state, province, country, or maybe it's title. If you have it in a form, your forms are coming in nice and standardized, but if you're uploading lists from different locations, events, vendors, et cetera, or CRM, and the data is not aligned, this is why we use the contact washing machine app. This is where marketing automation has a key automation feature that hopefully everybody uses. My tip is start simple, get something going like we have here. Um, if there are more questions, guys, we don't, I don't see any in the Q and A. Uh, or in the chat. So I think we're good. I'll follow up with links like I've shared in the chat today over Zoom. I'll put those in the follow-up communication to you all. So uh, feel free to reach out if you have any questions. Um, we unfortunately ran out of time to open it up. So thank you for uh, Sam, Jess, Justin, Brenda. Thank you, you guys, again, for presenting and being prepared to do so. And Guys, the next Eloqua user group meeting is July 21st, again, the third Thursday of the month, same time. Um, we're figuring out our agenda for it. It's probably going to be reporting themed. We have a quick tip from one of our sojourners that she's definitely going to share related to insight reporting. It's pretty cool. I've never known how to do what she shows, and it's going to be a quick five-minute tip. And then we also might cover close with reporting. <clears throat> Excuse me. So thanks again, everybody, for attending. I hope you all have a great rest of your Thursday, a nice weekend, and stay safe, everybody. Bye.